The Tivoli from San Young. The SUV you've not yet considered. Welcome to Autumn in the Lake District and we're here with the B-segment SUV, the Tivoli from Sanyang. And this was first launched in 2015 and this is the latest model. There are some changes to the previous version including the front, the back and the interior. And new engines. That's right Annabelle. We have a 1.2 3 cylinder 126 brake horsepower, there's a 1.5 which puts out 163 horsepower and there's also a diesel as well. It's not a new engine but it has been upgraded and there are three trims in the range to choose from. We have the Ventura. Prices for the range start at just under £14,000 and the Ultimate is just under £23,000. Now not everybody's heard of Sanyon, but they have been making SUVs and pickups for 40 years and they offer a seven year warranty as well. A big thank you to Lloyd Vehicle Consulting for the Tivoli Ultimate and pre-facelift footage. Now I have a soft spot for the Tivoli and although there are some changes, it's still in keeping with the design language that Sanyon are going for. And what do I mean by that? Well. Look at this, there's a lot more chrome. And I love the new housing around the triple LED front fog light. And it's stylish, which is really what the Tivoli is all about, which is where the name comes from. I love this design here, how this chrome flows around the projector headlamps. You've got lots of tech and safety on this car and it comes with automatic projection headlamps and LED daytime running lights and rain sensing wipers. You also have EBD and lane keep assist, as well as other features and you have front parking sensors. And this raised ride height is perfect for some adventurous picnicking. There are a range of wheels. With the EX, you get the 16 inch steel. We have the Ventura, which comes with the 16 inch alloy wheels. The Ultimate have 18 inch diamond cut alloys. You've got this black arch cladding that continues down the side as well. One of the style features that I particularly like is this chrome that carries on from underneath the windscreen and goes all the way down the side of the car, giving it a bit of an executive look. And these black A pillars really offset the cherry red, which is a brand new color. You have electrically operated power folding door mirrors. They are in a two tone, which is in contrast to the door handle, which is all color coded. These roof rails, they do look nice, but they are for style, not for function. And one design cue that's very interesting. The new TGDI logo is only on the driver's door. And brakes, you've got all round discs, which are vented at the front. I've always liked the rear of the Tivoli. It's rather unique and the badges really pop. My personal favourite on this new model is the rear lenses. Not only are they sculpted, it looks like a waterfall. Very pretty. In terms of tech, you've got rear parking sensors, reversing camera, you've got a high level brake light and a shortened beasting aerial. And just in case you weren't sure about the name, Tivoli. I love it. Backwards. Let's see how easy it is to get into the Sanyong Tivoli. It's got a nice raised ride height and keyless entry as well. The doors open nice and wide and it's a nice big door opening too. That was nice and easy. The raised ride height helped a lot. It would have been nice to have a grab handle. One thing to note is this may be a bit of a reach if you're shorter. This is the first time I've sat in the new Tivoli and I'm very impressed. There are a few changes to the previous generation. For example, there was a vent here and it's all incorporated into this. Looks very nice. New cluster and some new shaping around the car too. Now, yes, you will find hard plastics, but let's face it, it starts at under £14,000. It's a bargain, it really is. But you could go for the ultimate, and you could get things like an LED cluster. Lots of premium materials. I love the finish on the door card as well, especially this insert here. You even get things like steering modes. I've got all round electric windows, power folding, electrically adjustable door mirrors, and have a little panel to the right hand side as well. And that's got things like lane keep assist. I can heat my steering wheel and turn on descent control. Coming to the steering wheel, leather wrap, stitched, D shape as well, so very sporty. On the left hand side, I've got media and telephony controls, and on the right hand side, cruise control. When it comes to the cluster, you've got rev counter on the left, speedo on the right, and a fuel computer in the middle that gives you things like MPG and other stats. Decent sized infotainment screen, rotary dials, we love those power and volume on the left, and seek and tune on the right. Shortcut buttons. The infotainment system has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, DAB Radio, but there is no satellite navigation. But that's easily solved with a smartphone. Below that, more rotary dials. It is air conditioning. We've also got some shortcut buttons, hazards, demisters, and dependent on the trim, depends on what features you get in the car. As this is a Ventura, we get things like heated seats, heated steering wheel, but we don't get the upgraded cluster. That's fantastic. 
which is more like a, a giant infotainment screen. It's a similar setup to MG. And this button, this is the steering modes. You've got sport and normal, USB, and you can disable your start stop. You also have a push button start here. 12 volt socket, and look, another cigar lighter. Six speed manual, and behind that, an old school handbrake with hill hold assist. I've got decent headroom and I've got decent legroom as well. It's a very comfortable seat and the operation is manual. I've also got reach and rake on the steering wheel too. Padded armrest to the right hand side and padded centre rest for you and your passenger. These two tone seats are finished very nicely with faux leather and cloth trim. They're very stylish and they're very comfortable and I like these supportive bolsters as well. Interesting door pocket on this for storage. You've got a separate cup holder at the front, then you've got like a secondary cup holder and a bigger area behind that. In the center, decent storage area, which has rubber grips, so it means whatever's in there is not gonna slide around. It's perfect for a mobile as well. Two cup holders and a decent sized storage area under the armrest. And when it comes to the glove box, that's of a decent size. Let's see how easy it is to get into the back. The doors open nice and wide. It's quite a big opening. That was nice and easy. And there is a grab handle if I do need it. The raised ride height helped a lot. And it's very easy to grab this. Ooh, these are interesting. It's a bit like a seat pocket. It's perfect for storing even bigger items. That's quite clever. That's the thing about the Sanyong Tivoli. It's not quite what you expect. I expected there to be less headroom in the back and I've got ample headroom, even at six foot three. I've got lots of legroom as well. And I can put my feet under the seat. And it's a nice, relaxed, comfortable position too. Lots of light coming in as well. And a nice light headliner too. Grab handles above each door, except the drivers. That would have been handy for Annabelle with the mobility. But overall, it's very good. Yes, hard plastics, but you expect that. But I've got an electric window. This door card's finished nicely. And I've got a decent sized door bin as well. Two people will be very comfortable on a long journey in this car, especially as you have a pull down armrest with two cup holders. Very nice. Three people on shorter journeys and three children, no problem whatsoever. Isofix points on the back of the seats and airbags all around the vehicle. Would have been nice to see is maybe some vents or a USB or 12 volt socket. I'm very impressed with the Tivoli. With keyless entry, it's simplicity to open the boot. What's open, you've got 383 litres of space. We get a pull-out load cover, but we don't get the false floor. Now, the interesting thing is, if that was there, that would eliminate most of this boot lip. And Sanyong have been clever. You can stow the load cover under here. You just lift these up, stow and replace. Perfect. You've got a 12 volt socket over there. You've also got the clever stowing system that you see on the rear of the front seats as well. The shopping bag hooks are white, but no tethering points, but you do have top tethers on the back of the seats. Under our carpet, we've got an inflation kit. To drop the seats, you just lift this here, like so. Once that's dropped, that increases your load capacity quite significantly you'll easily get a bike in there or lots of luggage. You can see, yeah, you do have a bit of a lip, but if you've got the false floor, that would virtually be eliminated. So, perfect for loading. Welcome aboard the brand new Sanyong Tivoli. This is powered by a 1.2 three-cylinder turbocharged engine, develops 126 brake horsepower, and it's coupled to this six-speed manual. And interesting to note that this is a brand new engine. It is, yeah. Same as the 1.5 as well, which was develops 163 brake horsepower. But the diesel engine is an existing engine, but it's been uprated. This brings the Tivoli in line with the Euro 60 emissions, so it's great news. And it's a three-cylinder turbo, so it is great fun. Well, you've got a soft spot for three-cylinder engines, haven't you, Ben? I have. I love the burble and the way they put power down as well. Especially when it's turbocharged. Ooh. The other thing about this car is it's been developed in Spain, so it's actually been tuned to European roads. And can you tell? Yeah. Well, 
Yes. yes. You were having fun there, weren't you? Oop. And look at that. Talk about agility. Yeah. Saying that, we've got steering modes, haven't we? And yes. yes, Annabelle, I am having immense fun. I do love this powertrain. The one thing you will note is because it's got a turbocharger, if you're in the wrong gear and put your foot down, there may be an element of lag. Considering its size, it feels very well planted. I mean, there is an element of lean, but there's not what you call body roll. And you can have some great fun on the back road in it. And it's got a raised right height, so you can get a little adventurous with your pit lift. And it's quite a talky engine as well. And the thing is, like I said, it's not the smallest car, but it doesn't feel big. It's very interesting, the driving dynamic of it. It does feel like you could literally just chuck it round bends. Uh, didn't you just do that? Suspension's very good, isn't it? It is very good, yeah. And you definitely feel bounced rather than bumped, don't you, Annabelle? Yeah, I haven't noticed one pothole at all. Yeah. There's been no jarring bumps. No, it's a very agile and engaging experience driving. It really is. I'm going to have to say it. It's ticking so many boxes. Yeah. Nice smooth gearbox, short shift, not notchy, and feels good. Yeah, there it is. If you're in the wrong gear, because of the turbo and the three cylinder, you will need to drop a gear bit. And join your motorways and uh, dual carriageways. It's nice and easy to get up to speed, and you've got power at motorway speeds if you so need it. When the vehicle's not under load, though, it's very quiet. It is, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's potter through villages. It's a nice driving position as well. It's very comfortable. I'm happily driving along here at about 38 miles an hour in fourth gear. And I've got power to pull away as well. Granted, I can't floor it, but there is power there. One thing you may notice, the higher up the revs you get, you may run out of puff. And thanks to the refinement, there is less noise in the cabin. Well, that's it. It's very well insulated, isn't it? Yes. I am just speechless at how agile yeah. and effortly fluid this drive is. Well, my biggest thought was, it's an SUV, yeah, granted, it's a B-segment one. How would a 1.23 cylinder perform in it? Would it have enough power to get you up hills? Would it feel an engaging drive? You know, is it the kind of thing you could happily drive on a motorway? And it, in a word, yes, it is. There seems to be plenty of power. There is, because of that turbo, you can just oh, stay up there, you really can. It feels so well under control, it really does. It feels very well balanced, the steering's nice and direct, and you've got sport mode as well if you want it even heavier. Yeah, I'm very impressed with this. That's what Joseph mentioned to me, he said, He'd driven the new one and he said it drives in a far more dynamic way and I can believe it because it just it feels really good you can whip it hills not a problem it's body roll like as a passenger about it's not bad at all there is a little bit of it as you would expect it's an SUV but in terms of how you were just literally hooning around in it, mm. I would have expected a lot more. Yeah. But it, as you said, it's well planted. Yeah, it takes the bumps, doesn't it? Well, I didn't really feel any bumps. It feels very, very well sorted. Launching from a junction, you will spin if you're not careful. But if you just travel along at a leisurely pace and just change gear normally. It's very smooth, isn't it? Yeah, it's a very smooth enjoyable drive. My head thanks you for that. And it's just the way it corners. It's not what you expect. Well it corners like a car. It's very interesting. It's it's yeah. very refined. I know San Young have a lot of history and a lot of experience behind them and it shows when you get behind the wheel one and you drive it like a hot hatch which is what you've just done it's amazing how much that experience counts for, I suppose. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. That's probably to do with the sport steering mode as well. Ooh, very Actually, good brakes. Yes. Go on back in, Chucky Chucky. With a three-cylinder, you usually get vibration through the cabin. There are a few out there that have eliminated it, but the Tivoli's been refined 
that you feel no vibration. They've also upgraded a lot of the safety in here. You get things like lane keep assist, lane departure warning, AEB, collision detection. There's a whole host of things. Fuel consumption, you're looking from anywhere between 35 and 40 miles to the gallon on the combined. The way I'm driving, I'm getting just under 30 to the gallon. That's quite impressive considering I've been sat at between five and 6,000 revs at points. I can see why Joseph chose this car. Yeah, it's a great family vehicle. It is. But also in terms of adventuring, like if we were going on a road trip, if we were taking a lot of camera gear down for a show, yeah. this would be perfect, wouldn't it? Yeah. So hats off to you, San Young. With a range of new engines that reduce CO2 emissions and new styling, the 2020 Tivoli is safe, practical and versatile, and it offers a refined interior with good build quality. It's Euro 6D and NCAP 4, with a seven-year warranty as standard and there's a range of trims to suit your budget.